we are chasing after the Lord. I want to release this word to you. I feel um, something unique on me today. I'm going to kind of go in and out of the prophetic here as we navigate through this uh, because I'm seeing a lot of stuff, um, which for those of you that don't know, it, that's very typical of many prophets. So we'll see a lot of things. But if you operate in multiple capacities, then sometimes you have to be in a certain posture where you must take what you see, put it in the recesses of your mind until the Lord gives you wisdom on when, how, and where to release that. And so I'm sensing a unique flow today and I'm going to do that. Uh, let's get into the word. Let's release a word in this house. Second Samuel chapter 11, verse one through two. And then I want to jump over to Psalm 7 and five we are still in this series called intentional um i mentioned this on the broadcast uh the uh, graphic is going to go out tomorrow uh but uh, i have two new books that are coming out uh may 30th amen to god be the glory to god be all the glory we have uh, two books one is called fresh start the power to begin again does not matter where you are, how entrenched you have become in whatever life you've created or life that was created for you and you just kind of tried to fit into it. But you have the power to transform any aspect of your life that you want to and you owe no apologies for doing that. You aren't the person that you used to be and therefore you must shift an environment that accommodates who you have grown into. A fresh start. The second book is called The Intentional Life. Moving in divine purpose. Moving in divine purpose. And as you begin to move in divine purpose, as you move in divine wisdom, God will begin to open up supernatural doors for you for his glory. Okay? So those two books come out May 30th of uh, next month. All right? Uh, let's get into this. Uh, Second Samuel. Uh, Second Samuel. Um, Second Samuel. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much. Hallelujah. I'm only going to do verses. Uh, well, you know what? We just, we'll take the whole ride. Let's do verses one through five. Okay. Second Samuel 11 verses one through five. Then I'm going to jump over to the book of Psalms. Okay. It says in the spring at the time when Kings go off to war, David sent out with the king's men and the whole Israelite army. They destroyed the Ammonites and besieged Reba. But David remained in Jerusalem. Whole problem. One evening, David got up from his bed and walked around on the roof of the palace. From the roof, he saw a woman bathing. The woman was very beautiful. And David sent someone to find out about her the man said she is Bathsheba the daughter of Eliam and the wife of Uriah the Hittite then David sent messengers to get her she came to him and he slept with her now she was purifying herself from her monthly uncleanness then she went back home the woman conceived and sent word to David saying I am pregnant now I'm, who you sent this word by is what i'm trying to figure out like who that's messy <laughs> the, woman the woman conceived and sent word to david saying i am pregnant let's jump over to the book of psalm hold up my goings in thy paths that my footsteps slip not i'm gonna read that again hold up my goings in thy paths that my footsteps slip not i want to minister from the subject your slip is showing your slip is showing father we honor you we glorify you we thank you for your anointing we thank you for your spirit we thank you for your divine wisdom spirit of the living god i ask that you would loose a supernatural anointing that makes prophetic preaching easy let us be transformed healed delivered and set free by your power and we thank you that by the end of this live we will not be the same person we were when we woke up this morning but we will be greater we glorify you for it now in jesus name all that agree say it is so and so it is. Just tell somebody and say, yo, slip showing, baby. 
I want to share something with you that is very important. Uh, we are in a very unique series here at Powerhouse Global, and it is called The Intentional Life. It is The Intentional Life. When you move in intentionality, everything that you do has to be founded upon purpose. It must be founded upon purpose. It cannot be founded upon ideas. Ideas, ideals, traditions, ideologies, religion, uh, uh, perspectives from your childhood. It must only be founded upon purpose. Everything you do must be on purpose. This is the factor that many of us often struggle with. The factor that we often struggle with is that we think because we know what makes us feel passionate and excited, we are aware of why we are here. I have even been to many places where they have told people, if you want to find out your purpose, find out what makes you mad. And whatever makes you mad is connected to your purpose. Find out what excites you and whatever excites you will connect you to your purpose. The danger of that type of perspective is it causes people to move in an emotionalism based life. That implies that whatever I feel is my signifier that I'm getting closer to my identity and the reason why I was born. The problem with that is that there are many things that can make you angry that have absolutely nothing to do with your purpose. There are many things that can make you excited that have absolutely nothing to do with your purpose. There are things that can make you happy that may have nothing to do with your purpose because happiness is relative and philosophical. But the pursuit of happiness, that idea is that whatever I want, I get. Someone is happy because they have gotten what they want. But if your will is not rooted in purpose, you cannot then determine your ability to operate in intentionality by what you feel. You cannot operate based on what it is that you want if your will has not been converted. I want to share something with you that is really important for you to understand. There are too many people that are walking around uh, uh, operating in a feeling based life operating in an emotionalism based perspective and the problem with that is you will not always feel like doing what you have been assigned called and gifted to do you will not always feel like using your gift you will not always feel like answering the call and you will not always feel like doing your assignment that is the reason why you cannot gauge your purpose based on what you feel. Can I share something with you that is extremely important? You must know that in this season the Lord is elevating you beyond your feelings. Now somebody that is watching me is saying, okay well I hear what you're saying apostle. I don't understand how that applies to me. The reason why that applies to you is because the Lord has taken the club from you. The Lord has taken the bookstore from you. The Lord has taken shopping from you and now you are forced to be in your house and in your own head. There are some people that can't even drive in the car without blasting music because they don't want to be in their own thoughts. There are some people that cannot sit at home alone. If they go to a restaurant by themselves, they will sit on the phone and face somebody the entire time because they cannot be in their own thoughts and in their own head. The problem with not being able to get within yourself is you will never figure out the route to why you do what you do. You will only operate an autopilot pilot without a clue that everything that you are doing, every decision that you are making is a matter of life or death. Somebody thinks I'm exaggerating and doing too much. Can I share something with you? I am team too much, but right now I'm not. And I want to share something with you that is extremely important. You need to know that every decision you make is a matter of life or death. I don't care if it's choosing between celery or a Snickers. Every decision you make is a matter of life or death. I don't care if it's something as simple as giving out your phone number on Facebook. Every decision that you make is a matter of life or death. When you have been called to a higher level of purpose, there is no such thing as neutrality in your life. God has nothing to do with neutrality. He said, I would rather you be hot or be cold. He said, but do not be lukewarm. God does not deal with things that are middle line, that have no clear uh, decisiveness in which way that it is going. Every Everything in your life is intentional. Now, this is the issue is that if I ask somebody, do you want to be a millionaire? You're going to tell me, yeah. If I 
ask you, do you want to go to the next level? You're going to say, oh, yes. If I ask you, do you want a new house? You would tell me yes. If I ask you, do you want to be the CEO of the company? You would say, sir, of course I do. But can I share something with you? If you say yes with your mouth, but no with your choices, you will never get to the place that you are asking God to take you to. Saying yes to God is not just conforming your lips and opening up your mouth to say yes. It is a cohesive action that implies all of my connections, lifestyle choices, will echo my yes to the Lord. Everything that I decide to do will echo the sentiments of my yes. You cannot move in divine purpose. You cannot move in divine wisdom if you have not learned the power of operating, watch this, in a life that is purely intentional. Watch this. The root word of intentional is intention. Okay? So that means that I need to know why I am doing what I am doing. Intentional people ask why. Now they don't ask why from here. They ask why from here. Because if I ask you why from here, you're going to jot out to me a bunch of cliches and colloquialisms that you have heard all your life that convince you to operate in the paradigm that you are in. Are you married from here or are you married from here? Are you raising your kids from here or are you raising them from here? And the truth is, it doesn't matter how much you put here. If it ain't here, it will not be here. It is out of the heart that flows the issues, the conditions, and the matters that are in your life, not out of your head. Now, this is the problem is that we get it in our head, but we we are not invested in getting it in our heart. It is easy to get something in your head. You know what I mean. You took a test and you memorized everything you could memorize for the test. And then when you sat down to take the test and you had your memory together, you typed up everything and you got an A plus. But then 10 years later, they asking you some of the stuff you learned in algebra and you don't remember any of it. It's because you got it here, but you never got it here. Many of us, all of the stuff that we did, we said, I'm going to be a better spouse. I'm going to sit down and watch Yann Levenzon and I'm going to let her fix my life and I'm going to sit through this because I ain't going to counseling but I'm going to sit through this and I'm going to let Yann tell me okay I hear what you're saying and I'm going to try to apply this one month later they make you mad and y'all driving down the street y'all done pulled over the car and cussed each other out for three hours and why is that because you got it here but you did not get it here it is possible to have stuff in your head that you really don't believe can I tell you something? Just because you go to church don't mean you believe it. And we finding that out right now. You can have it in your head, but if you don't have it here, it does not have the power to transform you. It is with the heart that man believeth unto righteousness. Can I share something with you? This is what you've got to understand. Some of us have never stopped in our life. I feel the anointing all over me. Some of us have never stopped in our life and asked us, why am I here? Why am I doing this? Why do I befriend you? Why am I coming to this place? Why do I eat this? Why do I interact with you? And see, this is the thing is you think that's too much. But if you really talk to some millionaires and you talk to some billionaires, they will tell you they are very particular with their time. They are very scrutinizing with who they connect to. They are very scrutinizing with what they do in every moment. Now, somebody that does not know their value will think that that is too much. But when you understand that you have great value, anything with great value requires great maintenance. And we want the value, but we don't want the maintenance maintenance. You want to obtain what you have not been matured into maintaining. And anything that you maintain, you must maintain it from here and not from here. This is the problem is that many of us have not gotten the victory beyond what we have heard. We have not gotten the victory beyond what we have seen and what we have been through. I want to share something with you. This is where we are in trouble. We think that being talented is enough to be successful. And we are trying to figure out why is it that there are people that can sing, they can write, they can draw, they have creative ideas. You cut on the infomercials and you literally see your idea right on the TV screen and you cannot figure out why are they rich and you are still at home broke. You cannot figure out why. You're not going to say, listen, you cannot figure out why is it that they are there and I am still operating in the paradise.
paradigm that I am in in my life. Can I tell you the reason why that is? The reason why that is is because you haven't figured out that the distance between your talent and your destiny is your discipline. The distance between your abilities and where God is calling you to and trying to take you to requires that you confront your past. Can I share something with you? There are many of us. Now listen, I'm not talking about those of us that are on medicine and you got a diagnosis. I'm talking about spiritual bipolar disorder. Some of us have spiritual bipolar disorder. We have spiritual uh, uh, schizophrenia and we've got about 10 people living in us, one for every room that we operate in. We got a version of us that goes home. We got a version of us that goes to work. We got a version of us that comes to church. We got a version of us that goes to the grocery store. We got a version of us that's in traffic and somebody cuts you off and you turn into Mike Tyson and you ready to bite somebody's ear off. There's a version of you for every room you operate in. And this is the problem. All your versions have been told by the governor and the mayor to go home, be in your house and lock the door and you don't know what to do because not all of y'all have to figure out how to get along with each other. Can I share something with you that's very important? God can only take one of you to the place that you are going to. He's not taking the whole group of you and who you pretend to be and who you want to be. At some point, you're going to have to realize that there are some parts of your life that you, you, not your mama, not your daddy, but you have got to get under control. There are some stuff that you have got to own and realize that everything don't come with instant deliverance. Now listen, I know that you were taught that and they told you you put a bucket underneath you and you cough up and we're going to hit you in the chest and we're going to tie a handkerchief around your neck like mother stacks and we're going to pop you in the chest and guess what? It's all gone. It's done. You are good. Can I share something with you? There are some things that take time to come out of and the only way to master it is you have got to master discipline. What am I trying to tell you? Is that there are some things that Jesus ain't just going to disappear and take away. Jesus is not just going to take away some of the stuff you were struggling with. Jesus is not just going to take away your attitude problem. There's some stuff that you've got to be committed to working at. You've got to own it. If you know that you cannot handle watching certain things, talking to certain people, going certain places without you acting a fool, without that part of you that is still being purged, and, I ain't going to real people, that part of you that's still being purged and purified, if you understand that there are still parts of you that if God don't keep you under the blood, let me talk about me. If God don't keep that under the blood, then you will completely set the whole neighborhood off. If God does not keep that under the blood, I will set the whole neighborhood off. If God does not keep this under the blood, there are some people, listen, listen, there are some people that better be glad that I'm saved because if it was not for the blood that was keeping me under control. Now listen, we have been taught to pretend because watch this, our salvation, it has been purely aesthetic. So what we have been taught is look saved, talk saved, act saved, walk saved. When you do this, go ahead and hurry up and get married to somebody so you don't fornicate after the age of 18 and you jump into this marriage that's not on purpose. You jump into a job that's not on purpose. You take a title that's not on purpose because people rush you into things without teaching you that some things you got to walk the discipline out. Some things you've got to go through the season and let God process you into your purpose. Nothing of greatness comes without process. Nothing of power and, and value comes without process. Everything that is considered valuable, gold, everything that is considered valuable, diamonds, pearls, it goes through a process. The value of your purpose requires that you go through the process. Can I share something with you? Part of going through the process is learning how to keep some things under control while you are awaiting for the full manifestation of your deliverance. Part of going through the process, God, I praise you, is learning how to keep yourself under control while you are waiting on the Lord to manifest the fullness of your deliverance. Can I tell you something? If you know that if you get money in your hand, you're going to spend it, then that that does not need to wait for God to deliver me from my bad spending before I learn how to save. That means that while I'm waiting on God to discipline me, I learn how to own my responsibility and get that money out of my hand. If you know that if you got money in your hand, you're going to spend it, put it in an account. 
Listen, it's that simple. But no, just Lord deliver me. I'm going on a 10 day fast so the Lord can set me free. Listen, eat and put that money in an account. There are some things that God is processing out of you and some things that God is doing in you that is not going to happen overnight. It's not going to happen overnight, baby. Can I tell you something? You're not going to lose weight overnight. Can I tell you something? It's not going to happen overnight. You're going to have to mess. Stop setting up diets that you know you can't keep. Baby, I'm going to juice for 30 days. That's what I'm going to do. I got me a blender, and I got me some avocados, and I got me some strawberries, and I got me some pineapples, and baby, I'm about to be blended because I'm about to be snatched like Beyonce. Let me tell you something. The only thing that you snatched was that ice cream out of that freezer because you did not figure out that you have to master discipline. That means that if you know that you cannot handle certain things, don't set yourself up to fail. Start off by saying I'm going to at least reduce it to one scoop. Now, see, see this is see. There's some people. See, see, we've been taught unrealistic deliverance. We've been taught unrealistic deliverance. Start off by saying I'm just going to do one scoop. Start off by saying, listen, I know I can't handle it, so I'm not going to buy ice cream. I buy gelato. Whatever you've got to do, but you have got to own the parts of you that are not still free and stop throwing yourself in the life predicaments trying to experiment your deliverance on other people. If you don't have the discipline to follow, then don't try to lead. And stop throwing yourself in positions of leadership if you know that after about three weeks of leadership, you're going to cuss the whole usher board out. You are setting yourself up to fail. Well, I'm doing this by faith. By faith, sit yourself down. Because the Lord is saying, I am processing you in this season into a place of discipline and maturity. Stop showing up to fights that you are not prepared for. Well, I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. Through Christ that strengthens me. Did Christ send you there? Did Christ say that that was your season? Did Christ call you there? Did people call you there? And now you're spending the next 10 years trying to prove to people that you can do it and prove to people that you can. See, that's the reason why it's dangerous to not be healed from the trauma of your past and not be healed from rejection because you can't hear the Spirit of God beyond your rejection. You cannot hear the Spirit of God beyond your pain because anytime somebody will throw an opportunity at you, if you have not been healed, you're going to take every opportunity to try to prove yourself and the truth is is that it is counterintuitive and counterproductive because you are working against your self-esteem do not step into a ring that you have not been prepared for the lord is disciplining you for a fight on this level but when you master this level god's going to take you to that level can i tell you something trust in the lord with all your heart and lean not to thine own understanding you have to own what's going on in here i want you to hear this can I share something with you? When you have not taken responsibility for what's going on in here, I really want you to hear me. There are many people that are intelligent here. They're really smart. They got a lot of information. They can play the piano. They can play the organ. They can play the flute. They got it going on. But they don't have the victory here. If the wisest man, Solomon, who is the wisest man that ever walked the face of the earth can lose control over his future, then it is possible to have knowledge, understanding, and wisdom and still not ultimately walk in victory because you haven't dealt with this. Solomon, you got wisdom, but you also got a generational curse of a lack of sexual discipline that's here. So you can make great decisions here. But here, the reason why it's dangerous to lead a feeling, passion-driven life is because without an awareness of your why and your purpose, your passion will lead to pleasure, which will lead to pain. Can I share something with you? That is the reason why many gifted people and great preachers, let me just take it to the church, and great bishops who built illustrious facilities and illustrious ministries often got caught in very passionate scandals because they thought they could win by knowledge and gift, but they did not realize 
that you got to deal with the stuff that's going on on the inside of your spirit that you have not confronted. And let me, let me share something with you. Whatever you don't deal with in private will eventually creep into the pulpit. Whatever you don't deal with in private, microphones don't mean maturity. I don't know why we think that because we master mics that we have mastered our mess. Just because you have mastered a microphone does not mean that you've mastered maturity. We appreciate the fact that you can preach, but the issue that you are running into is that everything from your childhood that you have not dealt with is eventually going to start creeping up. And people are going to start to see the part of you that you've been hiding. People are going to start to see the part of you that you have not gotten the victory over. I need to share something with you. I need you to hear this. You can always measure a person's deliverance by who they connect to. I don't have to examine your life story if I can just see who you feel comfortable being around. And can I tell you something? People who have not been processed create toxic bonds because those toxic bonds keep them bound into toxic cycles. There are three types of toxic bonds that people who have not been processed create. And those bonds are this, trauma bonds, fantasy bonds, and unbalanced bonds. Trauma bonds, fantasy bonds, and unbalanced bonds. A trauma bond is when you get with somebody that you've been convinced is your soulmate and you were convinced they are the best thing since sliced bread, and you were convinced that this is the one that created, uh, God created for me, and nobody can tell me anything different. Can I share something with you? The thing that unites you is not love. It is not a mutual pursuit of the future. It is trauma. A trauma bond is when I can relate to what you've been through, and you tell me your story, and you can relate to what I've been through. And so we begin to build a bond off of mutual trauma. Now, this doesn't just re apply to romantic relationships. This applies to platonic relationships because some of you are friends with people because you hate the same person. You don't like each other. You really don't care about each other, but you hate this. I have seen people, listen, that have left the church and you could not get them to share a latte with each other if you paid them, but all of a sudden will become best friends. And it is not because they love each other. It is because they have mutual trauma. A trauma bond is dangerous because in order for me to keep the relationship, I have to remain tied to the trauma and I cannot get healed. The moment that I get healed, the, watch this, the relationship will become severed by the sword of the spirit. And so what happens is I get in an illegal soul tie through friendship or through romantic relationship because the only thing that keeps us together is we make each other feel comfortable in our mess. That is a trauma bond. The next type of bond is a fantasy bond. And that is a bond where I have fantasized this relationship to be something that is not. Now, you know those relationships because they were doing just fine as long as everybody was going out taking selfies on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. They are only happy on Instagram. They are only fine on Facebook. But when you go into their house, the police know their address by heart. They have no victory in their house. And listen, I know I'm telling the truth. There are some people that the police know them by heart they have the appearance that everything is all together they wear the same colors whenever they go out in public they, they wear matching rings they wear matching hairstyles all of the above but the truth is is that it is a fantasy bond they live in the pleasure of the fantasy that they've created and so they only feel happy in social environments because they don't exist outside of social life watch this the issue that they have is that many of them right now are being forced to stay in the house and look at this person and they're not going to the barbershop. They ain't got their weave done in a little bit. They ain't got their locks twisted in a little bit and they starting to look like the them that is outside of the fantasy that you all have created for each other. And what they are finding out is that at the root of this relationship there is no substance or foundation. The last one is an unbalanced bond and that is when I get, watch this, emotionally entangled into someone because I need to be needed. So what I continue to do is I continue to give them things and I continue to give them attention and I continue to buy them things and I continue to pay their cell phone bill and I continue to pay their rent and I continue to pay for their car and I continue to pay for their hair and I continue to pay for their life. Why do I do this? I do this because I want someone to eventually give me 
what I am releasing to that person. Now, this is the problem. And some of y'all going to think that this is spiritual and you're going to think this is sweet. But all of y'all that are typing these statuses, talking about find somebody that treats you like you treat them. Can I share something with you? Can I share something with you? If you love out of need, that is not authentic love. That is manipulation. If you give out of need, that is not authentic love. That is manipulation. Can I explain something? I love myself so much that anybody that comes around me and comes within proximity to me will come in the circumference of my self-love. I don't need you to complete me. I don't need you to validate me. I don't need you to pat me on the back. I don't need you to tell me that I'm beautiful. I know I'm beautiful. And when I begin to operate in the realm of knowing who I am, I stop surrounding myself with people to validate that idea. Some of you all are in unbalanced relationships. The relationship is off balance and it is off balance because you are operating from a realm of, watch this, using them to fix something from your past and your childhood. You cannot, I'm ringing somebody's bell, I feel it on this line. Some of you are sitting in your house right now in an unbalanced bond. You are sitting in your house right now and you are pouring all of yourself into somebody. You have given them 80% and they can't even come up with the 20. You are pouring into them. You're pouring into them. You're telling them I love you 10 times a day and you're wondering why you're not hearing it. The reason why you are not hearing it is because the only person that has the power to truly say it to you and it means something is you. The only person that has the power to truly release and I love you. If you cannot hear it, I must be the echo of what you have told yourself. If I am not an echo, you cannot hear me. If you don't learn how to love yourself, you will never love anyone on the level of appropriation that you must. And this is the problem is we keep jumping into situationships and not relationships instead of realizing that God is not sending you another half to make you whole. God wants to make you whole all by yourself. Anybody that comes along is only enhancing what I'm, I'm preaching real good. Listen, somebody type a man. Can I, can I share something with you? Because I know what I'm saying. I know what I'm talking about. I don't need you. I don't need you, listen, to bring another seat to the table. I got a table and I got chairs. Listen, can I tell you something? I want to know that you have your own table and we can combine our tables and expand the table. I need to know that you have vision. I need to know that you have insight. See, some of you all cannot move in an intentional life because you're too needy. Some of you cannot move in an intentional life because you're too needy. I can't make a decision based on intention if I need my phone bill paid. I cannot make a decision based on intention if I... Listen, I feel somebody that is cussing me out in five different languages through this Facebook Live. Can I tell you something? Can I share something with you? Can I share something with you? If you are desperate, you don't have time to ask why. Why? Because I need to eat. <laughs> your why is not connected to your purpose. It's connected to the fact that you have not owned responsibility to yourself. And can I share something else with you? They're not called to be your mama or your daddy. They are not called to be your mama or your daddy. And I know we have sexualized those terms. But the truth is, if you really tell the truth, that daddy, that zaddy, comes from your problems with your own daddy. Somebody type, deal with it. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost all over me. Can I share something with you? I need to share something with you. The Lord told me this, and I'm getting ready to go. The Lord said for the next seven days, hear this prophetic word. It's time to do a watch check. <laughs> call him. Can I ask you a question? Why do you call me so much? No shade. <laughs> Why do you want to come over my house so much? No tea. Why do you want to be with me? I have low self-esteem, but I need to know why. No shadows. I just want to know. Are you, watch this. Is your why an echo of my why? Jesus. And can I tell you something? Don't take the first answer you get. I'm about to roll. Do not take the first answer you get. Why do you want to be with me? Because you're cute. Deeper. Why do you want to be with me? Oh, because I like the way that you talk to me. Deeper. Why do you want to be with me? Let me tell you something. Until you hit that bottom line that echoes your purpose, say, okay, check, please, and move on with your life. 
Because if you cannot answer that question why, I'm setting 10 people free right now. I'm saving you from, watch this, from, you, don't, you know why the domestic violence rate has gone up? Because you got people staring at each other and they can't figure out why. The weave has come out. The lashes are falling. Ding dong, the witch is dead. And you are trying to figure out why are we here? And if you don't know your own why, you will adopt the why of somebody else and take on an identity that's not assigned to you. I love Cardi B. But Cardi B could not be the first lady of the United States of America. Which means that if you want to be Cardi B and that's your inspiration, then stop saying you're going to be the next Oprah Winfrey. Can I share something with you? Both Oprah and Cardi B were sexually abused as kids. Both Oprah and Cardi B have been traumatized by men. Both Oprah and Cardi B came from the hood. But Oprah did a level of work on herself to get to where she is. Y'all not going to say amen. amen. But I'm not connecting the next however many years I'm supposed to be here with you. And I'm not just talking about romantic relationships. I'm talking about friendships. Somebody say period. I'm not connecting the next I don't know how many years of my life to you. And with you. And you don't know why you are here. You have no plan. I'm preaching good. Because when you move in intentionality, everything you do is on purpose. And when you date somebody that's not intentional, they're going to say, you're doing too much. I, didn't, I don't understand, brother. I ate that because I felt like I ate that. Well, I did that because I felt like doing that. Well, I did it. Listen, 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 listen. If I tell you that my goal is to lose weight, don't be bringing fried chicken up in the house and bringing all kinds of fried food in the house. Act like you care about my goals. Ask them. Say, what am I called to do? I don't know. Same, wrong answer. Deeper. Can I say something? And I'm getting ready to go. Some of you all think that you know intimacy because you know how to have sex. You don't know that you know intimacy until your relationship goes through a sex drought. Oh, y'all go. <laughs> <laughs> Can I share something with you? Listen, 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 listen. Let me, let me, let me holler at you. Let me say something with you. You don't know intimacy until sex stops. Some of you all use sex to compensate for the fact that you don't know intimacy. Because anybody that you still got to hide things from and lie to, you are not intimate with. You are not intimate until the lies stop. You are not intimate until you stop lying. That means, cover the baby's ears. Cover the baby's ears. Minister Jimmy, cover, cover them twins' ears. Cover them baby's ears. Just because somebody, follow me, can make you arrive in the natural does not mean that they can get you there in the spirit. And when your life is controlled by your trauma and your pain, then you're going to make decisions that are always in alignment with your pain. And you will create trauma bonds, fantasy bonds, and unbalanced bonds. The Lord is liberating people from trauma bonds, fantasy bonds, and unbalanced bonds. Because at this point in your life, after all that you've been through, and coming into this pandemic, by the time they say you can leave the house, and I believe them, after the tanning salons and the golf course is open, by the time they say that I can leave my house, everything I do from this point on is going to be intentional. I am not sitting on a phone call and listening to you breathing. In this season, everything must be intentional. I'm getting ready to go. David is gifted. David is anointed. David is called. 
David has all kinds of abilities. David has more abilities than anybody else I could probably think of in the Bible. He is a king. He is a priest. He is a prophet. He is a musician. He is a psalmist. He is greatly gifted. His, his gifting and ability was so wonderful that the very emblem of Judaism is the star of David. David is the very uh, icon, the ideology of what Judaism stands for. Even the Bible says that the New Testament, the church, the feeble of them shall be as David. He is written as a foundational uh, 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 theological figure through which we can gauge our own ability even to this day. And David, as wonderful as he is, gets the seat, gets the kingship, moves on up. But then the parts of him he did not deal with starts manifesting and it controls where he sets his focus listen to me you can't understand first Samuel 11 without understanding first Samuel 10 I want you to hear me oh my god please hear me and it came to pass that at the time that the kings went to war that David was in the bed by the window. If you read in the chapter before, David had just suffered embarrassment and hurt. And because David does not do well, I want you to hear me, with, with voices that resemble Jesse's, Can I tell you something? Correction is not God hitting cancel on you. Correction is God pruning you so that you can produce more fruit. Just because someone says that you can do it better does not mean that it's time to quit. Now see, when you're surrounded by trauma bonds, fantasy bonds, and unbalanced bonds, an unbalanced person ain't going to tell you that you can do better because they don't care. Just, just please... Just, just, just keep paying the rent. A trauma bond person ain't going to tell you you can do better because you make each other feel good in your pain. And a fantasy bond person ain't going to tell you you can do better because they're too busy taking Instagram photos of y'all and then after the Instagram photo, beating your brains out. I'm telling the truth. I want you to hear me. I want you to hear me. In this season, I feel somebody getting set free. I can literally feel somebody watching me that is getting ready to get out of a predicament right now. When I deal with my past and my pain, what had control over me, God, I praise you, what had control or the illusion of control in all of my decisions and my relationships are severed by my freedom from my past. Can I tell you something? Can I tell you something? In this season, the man of God, be play softly for us. In this season, I want you to hear this. You've got to make sure that the part of you that is still in the process of overcoming your pain is not in control of your relationships and your life. You need to surround yourself with people that are operating on the level that you want to be on. If you're sitting at a table and you're the smartest one at that table, you're at the wrong table. You need to sit at a table with people that have the power to speak into you and pull you into your prophetic call and pull you into your prophetic identity and pull you into the reality of what God has called you to do. And the only way to do that, I want you to please hear me, is you gotta be healed from your trauma and your past. You have got to own that process. Owning that process. And for some of you all, well, I'm going to sit and ask them why. We're going to sit down and I'm going to do an interview. And I'm No. For some of you all, that means a season of singleness. I know some people who have never been single. They have been theoretically single, but they have never truly been single. When they're not with somebody, they practice on somebody. Listen to me. 
There's a, um, there's a woman that is watching me and you have recently gotten in a relationship with somebody. That person is in ministry. You've gotten in a relationship with someone that's in ministry and you have been in some kind of situation. And the Spirit of the Lord said this particular situation that you've been in, it's been a situation and a season of undecisiveness. The Lord said you are not ready to move forward into that relationship because you are not free from where you've been. You are not healed from where you've been. And you are going to slow down the ministry of that person you are connecting to because you think that being connected to a person in ministry is something that is not. The Lord said, I'm putting you in a season of healing. I'm putting you on timeout because I must heal you from the trauma of your past. Let me share something with you. Growing up, I grew up in a house where um, my grandmother, my mother, my aunts, they didn't believe in wearing pants. They were what they call old school Pentecostal. They didn't believe in wearing pants. So they would wear skirts. And the skirt had to be past your knee. If you sat down in the skirt and the skirt went up, you had to have what they call a lap scarf that you had to put over your knees. Can I share something with you? The old church mothers, they would tell you, make sure, baby, underneath that skirt that you got to slip on. And you will put on that slip to cover the parts of you that are not meant to be seen. The Spirit of the Lord spoke to me and said that there are many people that are so in a rush to get to where you're trying to go that your outfit is out of order and your slip is showing. The Spirit of God says to you today, and I want you to hear me, and I know folks don't wear slips nowadays. So. <laughs> I know they don't wear slips. Because when trauma dresses you, you'll show off your body because that's what you feel that's all that you have to offer. I can look at people and I can tell when rejection dressed them. I'm not even going to go down that route. What I am going to tell you is that for many of you, your slip is showing. Can I share something with you that I need you to know? When you blasting all your business on Facebook, when you venting to everybody you see, when you're jumping in and out of relationships, when you are sitting connected to everybody, everybody is brosis, everybody, just trauma controls you. And you're trying to create something that you're not mature enough to create. I need to share something with you. The Spirit of the Lord said it's time to get your outfit together, love. Get your presentation together. Revamp your connections. Revamp who you're connected. I feel the anointing all over me. The Lord said, revamp your focus. Revamp your why. Get your focus in divine order. Because many of you have come out of divine order. Many of you have allowed trauma to dress you. You have allowed pain to dress you. You have allowed problems. You have allowed situations. What you have been through always controls where you are and your ability to get where you're going. The Spirit of the Lord wants to set you free from your trauma. I want you to open up your mouth and begin to worship the Lord. And let me share something with you. The Lord told me that there are many of you that are going to be unseated in this season. And I'm talking to some shepherds. Some shepherds are going to be unseated in this season. Because you have stepped into a realm that is beyond your healing. You left the church and you split the church and you started a ministry. You caused confusion where you were. And so now you cannot hear the Lord telling you to go back and make it right. But you have started your own ministry. You started something. And you might be called and you might be gifted and you might be anointed. 
But the Lord said that if you don't deal with your trauma, eventually what you were hiding is going to slip out. And you're going to get in the pulpit and your slip going to be showing. You're going to get before the people and everything that you've been hiding that you have not dealt with is going to come out. I hear the Spirit of the Lord saying, even to many of us in this room, that before I elevate you in this season, there are some things that I've got to deal with in your spirit. The way that you create relationships, the way that you make connections, the way that you intertwine yourself in certain environments. The Spirit of God says that some of you, uh, uh, there's some people that are just loud. Wherever they go, they're just loud, 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 loud. Got to be the center of attention because their trauma controls them. Their trauma controls them. Their pain controls them. God didn't give you all that voice to out talk people. God gave you that voice to be a voice to the nations. But you'll never become that voice to the nations until you get control over where you've been. And that requires for you breaking out of relationships that keep you where you've been. And getting connected to some authentic anointed people. Authentically anointed people. That have the power to look you in the face. Woo! The Lord said I'm getting ready to send you people that are anointed to confront you. I'm getting ready to send you people David because his deliverance did not come until he got connected to Nathan and when the prophet Nathan came he said David you look real good in your kingly outfit but your slip is showing I know that you killed Goliath and I know that you've done great things and you slayed tens of thousands of people but your slip is showing you great out there but the Lord said in my eyes I see the parts of you that you refuse to deal with Lift up your hands. I want you to receive this. David is really not your fault. It ain't fully your fault. Because you've heard all your life that you're a king. And you've heard all your life about your potential. But you've never been in a space where people had the power to confront you. I want you to hear me. There's about 20 people watching me. The Lord is saying this to you. There's about five people in this room. The spirit of grace is saying this to you. I'm confronting the parts of you that have not been processed. You're going to spend the next three months in that process. You're going to spend the next three months in that process for some of you get off your phone and deal with the parts of you that you have not confronted a new house is not going to fix the drama in the apartment the spirit of the Lord says I'm healing you right now pray in the spirit for about five minutes we're getting ready to go uh, somebody get this uh, camera from uh, her and, and record. I got a word for her. Why is it always the camera girl? <laughs> Jesus, lift up your hands. Woman of God, the Lord has called you to great things. There's unusual gifts, anointings, and abilities that are within you. Um, but the Spirit of the Lord says that many of your panic attacks, your anxiety attacks have been connected to the trauma of your childhood that you have not dealt with. And there's been this spirit of anger that has been trying to rise up out of you. And it's been attacking your mind. I see you last Thursday. And the enemy was trying to convince you that you're going to have to get on medicine. And that you're going to have to take something in order to control what's going on with you. And this tormenting spirit that has been after you, you've literally been feeling like you're losing your mind, like you are stepping outside of your mind. And this is the issue and the root of your trauma. The root of your trauma has been a fight for your identity. It has been a fight for your identity and concerning who you are. The Spirit of God says that I'm getting ready to restore to you the reason in which you were born. And I'm getting ready to reveal to you the depth of your destiny. And the Spirit of God says that trauma will no longer control you. 
The Spirit of the Lord says that I'm going to heal you so that you may love on another level. I'm going to deliver you so that you may love on another level. But this spirit of anger, and this is like a spirit that attacks you in the middle of the night around four in the morning, and this thing will attack your mind, and you've been losing sleep, and this spirit of exhaustion that's been coming after you. The Lord said, I'm break, I feel the anointing here. I'm breaking this off of you. I'm setting you free today. God said that under this anointing, I am delivering you from this stronghold. This is a generational stronghold that was after your mother. It was after, it's still after her, but it's after, uh, it was after your grandmother. The Lord said that this stronghold that's been over you, it wasn't just, and, 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 and the truth is, is that this stronghold, you inherited it by way of environment because it ain't even a bloodline stronghold. It is a stronghold uh, uh, that is connected to an environment that you grew up in. But this spirit of anxiety and anger I break it off of you right now by the fire of God. We decree healing. We decree deliverance. And you will sing in freedom. You will write in freedom. You will produce in freedom. You will. Oh, the Lord turns your wound into a womb. And you will produce. You will produce. The Lord said, don't get stuck there. Don't get stuck in those emotions. Don't get stuck in that pain. Don't get stuck in that. The Lord said, I don't want you to get stuck in that emotional disposition. But I you into your future I liberate you into your next level father and I just walk towards me I don't want to lay hands on you walk to the woman of God let your fire come upon her right now whoa let your glory come up whoa let your glory come upon her right now and heal whoa I don't know who Jesse is, but the Spirit of the Lord says that I am bringing supernatural healing and deliverance. And the Lord said that the pain and the trauma of the abuse is broken. Right? Whoa. The secret shame is being broken right now. This lying spirit of guilt, I command it to break off of you. Break off of you. And today, the Lord said, you got your whole body back. Breakthrough. I can't see it. I can't see. Breakthrough is here. I can't see it. I'm healed in Jesus' name. I don't have on my glasses. I'm, I need you to walk towards me. I'm not sure who this is. Carmelita. Breakthrough is here. Carmelita, walk towards me. I don't have on my glasses or anything back there in the dark. I just. Did you lift up your hands. Whoa. I don't have to say much because there was a huge part of my message, a specific part that hit you right in your gut. The Lord is saying, woman of God, you cannot move too fast into anything because I am healing you and preparing you for something great it will come to pass but the lord ain't setting you up to fail the spirit of god says to you woman of god i am a good father says the lord the lord says because the truth is you don't fully know that the lord said i'm grabbing you by your hand pulling you to the back and whispering to you your slip is showing your slip is showing because I don't want you to be embarrassed I don't want you to put yourself out there too quick I don't want you to hurt you're still healing you're still healing God said own the fact that you're still healing because 
in the next four months, the Spirit of the Lord says that this healing process will be complete and the pain, I don't know who this was, this abusive relationship that you were in that has literally made you feel like you have to fight. I see someone's hand around your throat. The Spirit of the Lord says that as I preserved your life in that situation, as I kept you, I am preparing you and healing you. And you're going to love like you've never been hurt. You're going to love like you've never been hurt. I'm not fixing your heart. I'm giving you a new heart. A new one. A new one. Just walk towards me. I'm not going to lay hands. Father, release a fresh anointing. Whoa. Oh! Release a fresh anointing. That anger and resentment is coming up. It came from the abuse and it came from your mother. But it's coming up right now. It's coming up right now. It's coming up right now. They won't recognize you. Somebody get a bucket. Get a bucket. It's coming up right now. It's coming up right now. Up and out. 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 Somebody give the Lord worship. Woo. Everybody take 60 seconds to just release your sound, your worship. There. Release it, release it. The Lord said, don't worship, don't worship me from here. Worship me from here. Whew. Because as you worship, I'm shifting the direction of your eyes, your focus. The words from your past won't have power over you. The negativity won't have power over you. Nick, lift up your hands. There's been a spirit of negativity in your bloodline. It's been on your aunts. It's been on your mother. It's almost like they, they, they have this negativity and you have not understood it. Why are they so negative? The Lord says that I'm getting ready to heal them through you. I'm getting ready to heal them through you. You will no longer see the glass as half empty. You will no longer be bound by pessimism, but you will believe again. Woo! For with the heart, man believeth. Father, heal his heart right now. Heal him so that he will believe. Woo! Free him so that he will believe. Free him so that he will believe. Breathe through him so that he will believe. Somebody worship the Lord. Come on. I feel something right here. Come on. The glory is in here. The presence of God is so thick in this room. Dream. The Lord says, 
believe on me, believe on me, believe on me. Rejoice again, rejoice again. I'm going to bring you out, I'm going to bring you out. Believe on me, rejoice again, rejoice again. Believe on me, believe on me. Me. Look up your hands right there in your house. Yeah, 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 yeah. Believe me, believe on me. Trust again, trust again. Woo. Oh, you hit something right there, Brother Lawrence, because I hear the Lord say, Some of you have lost trust. Believe on me. I can't take you from unless you trust, trust again, again. You trust that what I said is going to come to pass believe on me believe on me trust again trust again believe on me believe on me share this live we'll be getting ready to pray and we're going to dismiss i want you to share it i need 10 people to share this real quick believe on me trust again trust again the spirit of god says he's about to heal some of you from childhood wounds that have damaged your trust believe on me the lord's going to heal you from childhood wounds trust again because you can hear god not heard God beyond your molester. Believe on me. Believe on me. Some of you have not heard God beyond your abuse. Trust again. You haven't heard God beyond your pain. You confuse God with the father that abandoned you. Believe on me. Trust again. Trust again. I want you to release that right there, that pain. Let it go. Let it go. Let it go. Let it go. Believe on me. Ty, walk towards me. Trust again. Believe on me. Yeah, 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 yeah. Believe on me. Rejoice again. Rejoice again. The Spirit of the Lord says, I give unto you a group home. I give unto you a home for the homeless. The Spirit of God said, I'm calling you into this. I'm calling you to do this. But specifically, for those that have been abused by parents, particularly, we, we are very good at recognizing father wounds. We are not so good at recognizing mother wounds. The Lord said that your wound with your mother is stronger. And the Spirit of grace says, I'm healing you from mother wounds right now. I'm hearing, whoa, it's coming up right there. It's coming up right there. It's coming up right there. There's that trauma. That's that trauma. The truth is, people don't know, there was a religious spirit. A relig They were hyper-religious. They were hyper-religious, and you grew up around a lot of hyper-religious people. The Spirit of the Lord said, I heal you from hyper-religiosity. People that believed in the idea of God but they did not have the authority to love on the level of God. The Lord sets you free right now. The Lord sets you free right now. The Lord sets you free. The Lord told me that there are some people in here. Woo! Believe on me. Everybody in this room and those that are watching me live. Everybody that's ever been called. God told me to do this. Everybody that's ever been called, particularly by family, a sissy, a dyke, a faggot, if you have ever been called that, I want you to, uh, a, or a bull dagger, wave your hand at me. Wave your hand at me. I break any form of internalized self-hatred that creeps up in different forms even you spirit of internalized self-hatred that masks itself in religion i break your power now 
I break the spirit of religion. I break the spirit of word curses. Self is coming up right now for many of you, even in this room. The spirit of those word curses, that pain, that trauma, I break it. I command it to loose your mind in the name of Jesus. Some of you by ex-lovers, some of you by ex-husbands, ex-wives, I break it. Some of you, even in the church, you sent through abusive sermons that are still in your belly. I break the power of it. I come against everything that's warring against your self-esteem. I come against everything that's warring against your mind, that's warring against your self-perspective. And I speak freedom. I speak deliverance. I speak healing. I decree and declare that you walk now boldly in strength. You are loved of God you are loved by God you have been called according to his purpose and I break every word curse spirit of abuse spirit of slander be broken somebody pray against slander there's somebody that's trying to walk in their truth and there's a slanderous demon that's after you and it's robbing you of peace spirit of slander be broken spirit of self-hatred be broken spirit of word curses be broken by the fire of God there's somebody watching me there is some demo it's like an aunt she's an evangelist and she talked about you so at a family reunion and it has traumatized your mind the Lord breaks the power of that witchcraft spirit off of you. You were picked on because you were not like some of the other young men. I break the power of that word, Kirk. Ooh, God has set somebody free right now. You were involved in the youth choir at your church. And after they talked about you, you ran away from ministry. You ran away from the church. You don't want anything to do with the church. The problem you keep running into is that every time you get a drink and you go to the club, the truth of your call keeps creeping out. The Lord said, I'm restoring you right now. There's another young lady. They kept trying to put you in skirts. And you said, this is not who I am, but I love God. You are a prophet. Uh, burn. You are a prophet. You are a prophet. And the Lord is calling you into the prophetic. The Lord is setting you free from that trauma right now. And the Spirit of Grace said it will no longer control you. Whoa. It will no longer control you. You're being set free by the power of God. Listen, we're getting ready to go. Under this anointing, I want to give people an opportunity to sow into this prophetic anointing. I want as many of you that can to get a seed of $30 and sow it right now under this anointing. 30 was the number of the maturity of Jesus' ministry. It began at the age of 30. It was the maturity and the beginning of Jesus' ministry. You know, we got to do social distance and all that stuff. And woman of God, if, if, if we didn't have to social dance, distance, I would come down there and I would socially dance with you. And the reason why I'm tempted to dance, if this was a normal powerhouse encounter, I would have jumped off this stage and started dancing with you. The reason why that is, is because I just looked into the realm of the spirit. I just saw what God is getting ready to do through you. And you are one of the devil's worst nightmares. Because you have the power to free people through, through unconventional ways. You have the power to free people through unconventional ways. Your gifts are about to flood the church. Your gifts are about to flood the church. Because through your unique artistic abilities, God is about to use you 
in the area of deliverance. There's an evangelistic anointing that's getting ready to come upon you and a heart that you have for God's people and a burden that you carry in your belly. The spirit of grace says to you, I'm getting ready to stir you and you are getting ready to be a vessel of honor. You're going to be a vessel because you're integral. And the reason why God honors you is because you have integrity. You do what's right even when you don't want to do what's right. And the Lord said, because of your obedience, because of your because of your integrity, I'm getting use your artistic ability. I want everybody sow that thirty dollar seed uh, through the cash app, uh, uh, cash sign, uh, PH Global uh, Network, or you can sow via PayPal or phglobalnetwork.org. I want you to begin to sow. I feel an anointing here. Oof. Anybody in this room know that God liberated you today? We owe God some thanks. Let's just take the next few minutes and just bless the name of our God. As the people are sowing, let's bless the name of our God. I know we can get the uh, uh, payment information on the screen so that people can sow. I sense an anointing that's so heavy. Whew. I sense an anointing that's so heavy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Zika ya la lolo lobo si di di akanda la lolo lobo sha. Zebra nda la ria sugura ba manda ha. Zebra kobo bo dia sondo lolo lobo hoy. Ye na la mandi a shabara gande de nebesu. Hallelujah. Woo. I wanna dance again. I want to sing again, thank you, Lord. I believe again, and I want to sing again. I want to dance again, thank you, Lord. I believe again, and I want to dream again. I want to dance again, thank you, Lord. I believe again, I believe again, thank you Lord, I'm gonna dream again, I'm gonna dream again, dream again, thank you Lord, I wanna dance again, I wanna dance again, I wanna dance again, thank you 